when the time started and i started i got started with the reading section the first passage it completely stumped me i could not understand anything the questions weren't happening for me someone would say scheme it first some would, someone would say uh, like first do one to five and then read or something like that for, the other one would say scheme all the questions first and then go to the passes or something like that and um, i'll change my strategy day by day actually we had planned for two months and our exam got cancelled so we had extra one month for us but by that time we had already finished all the official tests don't just think of it as two months think of it as 60 days 60 long long days what's up guys so for here a lot of you guys had asked me in the comments of my previous videos and in my dms to upload videos related to sat so in this video i've interviewed two of my friends from nyu 80 we had prepared for the sat together and scored 1550 and 15 80 on their sat remind you that 1600 is the highest that you can score on sat so their scores really so that they know what they're talking about so i hope this video will be helpful to a lot of you guys all the necessary links will be in the description down below also i plan to upload more sat related videos soon so don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss them now without further ado let's get started so hey guys uh why don't we start with each of our introduction hello everyone uh, my name is dimash adhikari I completed my A-levels in 2022 and I gave my SAT in 2021 October, October 2nd. Um, I got a score of 1550, 800 in maths and uh, 750 in evidence-based reading and writing. Uh, I'm an incoming freshman at NYU Abu Dhabi. Hello everyone, my name is Monu Stakal. Uh, I graduated from high school in 2020. I'm an incoming freshman at uh, New University of Abu Dhabi, class of 2026 as well. I appeared my uh, SAT on October 2nd, 2021. My SAT score breakdown is 780 on ev evidence-based reading and writing and 800 on math, uh, a total of 1580. Awesome. So I also scored above 1500, but it was in my third attempt. So that's why I was kind of reluctant to, you know, make sad video by myself. So thank you guys for joining me today. I really appreciate it. So why don't we just start with the first question what was your like starting point for your sad journey you know the initial score from which point you started practicing i actually started practicing for sad when i was in the middle of my levels at that time i had not given time consistently on that but i had started doing some questions from khan academy so i think for the first practice test that i that i had given i had received a score of below 1400 so something in the range of 1300s uh, and then on, I think, July, at that time, I think I met Manoj, and then we started preparing to, uh, together after that for two or three months. Yeah, that's about my starting. I actually uh, started uh, practicing for SAT just three or four months before the SAT. Like when Bima said that he met me, I had not done anything at all. I had just practiced one or two practice sets. That was all about it. Uh, my starting uh, point was around 1410. It was not that bad. But then we we did practice for three or four months before appearing for this set. So you guys said that you were around 14 on your score. So what was your like strong uh, section and what was your weakest section? Okay, so math came naturally to us. I mean, uh, math was math uh, was really easy. We thought that math is really easy, and we didn't need to invest too much of our time in math. We got consistently high school in math. What we struggled with early was uh, English, particularly the reading section. Writing section was also somewhat formal like, and that's why we scored really nice marks, consistent nice marks. But reading comprehension uh, came with a lot of difficulties, and we struggled it with a lot. I mean, scoring consistent marks uh, was not good enough. I mean, we would score good marks sometimes, but again, the next time we'll not get quite good marks, and uh, that is we how we struggled with reading in the earlier phase of our practice sessions. Was that the same case with you, Bimersha? Yeah, it's almost similar, almost the same. Uh, for me, math also came natural to me. The problem was that while doing so many problems, I think there are like 58 questions in mathematics. So if you do that many problems, there are chances that you will make some simple errors on some questions. So that was something that I had to overcome. Uh, but apart from that, content-wise, topic-wise, math uh, was not that hard. Uh, as Monos already said, uh, reading was the trouble for me, actually. Uh, writing was pretty good because it was based mostly on rules and rhetorics, so we could learn that easily. But comprehending the passages, uh, the difficult passages, and uh, that too, without being native, native speakers, that was a difficult thing for me. So we worked on that. What resources or books, videos, like YouTube videos, whatever, what resources did you guys use? Okay, so before I had made Monos, uh, I had uh, watched a YouTube playlist uh, on sat writing. So that also helped me a lot. It was a uh, video 
that was typically 10 to 15 minutes in length. And there were a lot of videos, uh, uh, I think around 40 or 50 videos. So I used to just uh, see them on a free time uh, before I uh, met him, of course. And after we met, uh, we did not jump in any books as such. Uh, we started practicing the questions on Khan Academy and the full practice sets. Uh, and the thing that worked uh, best for us was that we used to review every questions because since uh, we did every test together, chances were that the questions that I made wrong, he uh, often made those questions right and vice versa. So we could uh, really help each other in that regard. And later, uh, because we did not want to miss out on anything that the books could offer us, so we started with uh, Erika Melzer's book on reading and writing. Uh, for writing, it, it did not uh, affect us, affect our scores uh, that uh, greatly. But for reading, I think uh, it did help me a lot. So that book was a gem for us. So do you want to add something to that, Manoj? Yeah, one thing. I mean, uh, as you already said, we just practiced a lot with Khan Academy and we also did Erika Melger's reading and writing book. We also at least try going through the free free version section from 1600.io videos, at least once it. Uh, that gave us a clear idea of how to approach the problems, how to eliminate uh, the options. Uh, I'd like to add that as well. There's uh, There are a couple of videos uh, in the free section as well in 1600. I would uh, suggest uh, for the people out there uh, to go through them once as well. Uh, just to be clear here, you you guys did not spend money to any of the resources, right? Awesome. No. So, all free. That's, that's really good. Uh, how did you... Uh, you guys talked about Erica Melzer's book. So how did you guys use that book? I mean, like, did you just read the whole book through and started doing questions or just went through the book, taking notes? Uh, what was the process was like? I mean, the Erica Melzer book has uh, some practice questions there, but they're inside the book. So what happens is you uh, read a particular chapter or a, a section, and then you practice those questions. And uh, the passage is actually the same almost the same in all the sections. Uh, but anyway, it gives you a decent amount of practice. So we went through the book, we practiced what was, whatever was there in the example section. Uh, and then we went uh, back to the practice section, the actual practice questions that we were actually doing earlier uh, before reading the Erika Melcher book. And I would like to say that when, after we read Erika Melcher's book, there were certain kind of uh, improvements. It was not like a drastic change, but then there were subtle differences that we could experience from within, right? Uh, we would notice something like, this is what I have improved after reading the book. There are subtle changes that we could experience. Uh, I would recommend everyone to go through the book as well. It's almost the same thing for me as well. Um, and we did also try out some other resources as well. Uh, but for example, we started with, we tried uh, the Pinson Reviews practice test as well. And that was a very bad experience for both of us because uh, they claim that they make questions harder than the set. And so that it would prepare us better, but uh, that didn't work at all for us. For instance, uh, I and Monos both, we got a terrible score just two days before our set when we tried to give one of the tension reviews full test. So uh, we had been warned through Reddit posts and other stuff as well, but then we tried it out and we failed miserably. So I would not recommend any of that. Regarding Erika Melzer's book's impact on us, yeah, it did help me because I had some uh, problems with specific types of questions in reading. For example, the uh, evidence-based questions. So I always had trouble uh, with those and as well as the vocab as well. So uh, through the feedback of both the book and Manos, uh, I improved on that. And that helped me gain a good score at the end eventually. Talking about bad experiences, uh, are there like any resources that were not really helpful, but just plain waste of time? Actually, we had planned for two months, right? and our exam got canceled. So we had extra one month for us. But by that time, we had already finished all the official tests of SAT. So that was what propelled us to look into other sources because we did not want to waste our time, of course. And uh, in that journey, we also got some leaked papers uh, that were not released, that were not supposed to be released, but then we got hold of them. Uh, and the problem with, doing, uh, with them was that the questions were fine, right? So they were the questions that appeared on the set, but there was no official marking scheme, answer key. So people were like giving their own answer schemes and different people had different answers. So sometimes I would get like 15 uh, questions wrong on writing, which was supposed to be my uh, strong point. And so that was a real uh, issue for us. So we recommend that, uh, you know, just plan the number of tests you uh, plan to give, right? Do not uh, exhaust all the resources all at once. So just factor in how many months you have or weeks you have until you're set and plan accordingly. Uh, and talking about bad experiences, as I've already said, 
uh, do not avoid completely avoid giving full test of uh, non-official set uh, exams. Those are a complete waste of time. Manoj, would right. you like to add something? Uh, yeah, same, same. Uh, it's almost the same as Bimarsu said. Uh, I'd like to add one point, however, uh, like scrolling through YouTube videos, uh, trying to see uh, which reading idea, sorry, uh, which which reading scheme or strategy is the best. I think that's also really harmful in a long term because it has happened to me once. Like I would try one one strategy for one test, and I would fail miserably at it. And I would go and then search for a lot of other strategies. I would find another strategy. Like someone would say scheme at first. Some would someone would say uh, like first do one to five and then read or something like that. For, the other one would say scheme all the questions first and then go to the passes or something like that. And um, I would change my strategy day by day and I would just be exhausting my practice papers and doing nothing more. I would not be learning uh, too many new things from that. So what I would say is at the first, you can try a few strategies and once you get to the strategy, stick to that strategy, strategy because it really helps in the long term. You, you won't be exhausting your papers uh, in the first place and you won't be wasting your time as well. So going through random YouTube videos uh, in the treasure hunt for the perfect strategy out there uh, is the waste of time, I would say. Uh, if there is a perfect strategy, uh, it is how you make a, a one strategy that you pick and then uh, continue hard, if, hard work and effort in that particular strategy. Yeah, that's really evil. I'm also guilty of doing that. So talking about reading strategy, Strategy. What reading strategies did you guys use? Like, did you read the whole passages thoroughly or just skim through the passages and went through the questions? Uh, what was your, you know, reading strategy was like? Okay, so I tried, as I already said, I also tried a couple of reading strategies, uh, including the skimming one, including the one where we did all the questions first and then uh, read the passages. Uh, and and also the one where we uh, jump from passes uh, to the questions and then to the passes uh, by underlining uh, something or something like that. There are a lot of strategies. Yeah. Uh, but the one that always worked for me, and I, I think that it's really subjective, the one that works for you might not work for me, uh, and that might not work for Bimasa as well. Uh, so you need to have that little bit of experimentation at the first, at the first, not in the middle. If you, if you do that in the middle, you're completely like... Uh, out of track. So you know, had a little experimentation. And for me, uh, what worked was reading to the passes through the whole at first, going from start to the end, and then going with the questions. Uh, but the important thing there is I would underline everything that I would think might be the question. Like that, that I would think when I would be going through the sentences, my mind would be like, okay, so this is important. Like this is confusing. So this might be asked in the question. I would underline that. Right? And then I would go from start to the end. And when doing the question, uh, I would remember something that, that I had underlined. I would go there. Uh, it's easy to see what's, what has been underlined. Uh, that really helped. So for me, the start to end worked. But I, I don't say that uh, it needs to work for everyone or it does work for everyone. I mean, my approach yeah. was yeah, different to one was actually. So it shows uh -huh. that what he's saying is true. Because what worked for him didn't necessarily work for me. My strategy was, was very specific to the type of passage I was reading. For example, if I was uh, studying a literature passage, so it flows like a story, right? So I can read it uh, almost all at once, or at least by breaking the whole passage into two parts. Because uh, usually in literature passages, what happens is you transition from one idea to another idea. So, right? so I can just split the passage in half and read it like that. For social sciences, uh, it was one of the easiest among all the passage types for me at least. So what I did was I did not read it all the way through. I just read uh, one or two paragraphs at a time and then went to the questions because the questions were more or less in a chronological order, right? So that worked for me. Uh, for the double passes where you have got two passes at once, uh, in that case, I used to read uh, each passage at one time. Right? So that worked for me. Uh, and for sciences, because there were a lot of details, so reading all the way through did not help me at least because there were kind of facts and things. And I did not uh, underline anything uh, like Manoj did. So for sciences also, I used to uh, just jump back and forth between the passage and the questions. So I had kind of different ideas, different strategies for different types of passages. I also followed the same Manoj strategy. Hearing Beamer's strategy, it's just quite interesting to me. Uh, let's move on to the next question. You guys said that you guys did lots of practice tests, but doing just practice tests is not enough, right? Because reviewing your mistakes is also a key 
factor in getting your grade score. So what was the, the process of reviewing your mistake was like for you guys? Absolutely. What you said is absolutely true. If you just go on uh, doing questions without actually reviewing your mistakes, then it is of no use, actually. So the sooner uh, people realize this, the better it is for them. For us, we used to meet on Discord. And then we used to do a full practice test, uh, the reading section at once and the writing. And then we used to check our answers using the answer key. And then we used to see our mistakes. And then we tried to discuss on what might have caused that mistake. We used to explain our thought process for choosing a particular option. And for example, if I made a mistake on some question, then Monos could point out uh, the exact place where I, I went wrong with uh, the thought process. And that helped me a lot. Also, we used to disagree on a lot of things, uh, especially when we were doing those uh, official tests that were not supposed to be released. So their mark schemes uh, were not accurate, right? So uh, even though if I if the answer key said that I made a mistake, but uh, some uh, part of me said that maybe I'm right and maybe the answer key is wrong. So in that cases, we used to disagree a lot in some of the questions. But in the case of official practice test, it was very objective. So at the end, we used to figure out exactly where we went wrong. Um, and initially, I also used to uh, keep a record of uh, the mistakes I did, especially on the writing part, because uh, those are mistakes that we could avoid uh, the next time we do the same kind of questions. The questions in the writing are also uh, quite repetitive, uh, in the sense that the same kind of skills are tested in every test. So for writing, I did that. For reading, I did not do that. But then we just used to discuss and uh, figure out where we went wrong. Yes, not much to add on what Bimasa said, but then again, yeah, it's the same thing. Like when we are together, we can go through the thought process of each one of us and find uh, where actually we did wrong, uh, right? So I think that is really important as well. Uh, the same suggestion from me as well. Uh, if you are going on and on with practice tests without reviewing what you just did, why you did, why why something uh, went wrong, there is no improvement in that. What you need to do is find what went actually wrong with the thought process that you have. Because first, second, when you were doing the questions, you'll always think, yes, this is the right answer. And, and many of the questions, but then the answer key will show that it's not the right answer. There's something that means that there's something wrong with the comprehension or there's something wrong with how you're approaching the question. So when you review the question with someone, when you review why something went wrong, you will understand that uh, whatever I thought was right is now wrong. And the next time you will bring the same question or a similar question, uh, it'll strike ahead that, oh, yeah, I had done something wrong the last time. I should not be doing this. That really helps. So my suggestion would be to have a friend who is doing SAT as well. <laughs> to have to do sad together and review each other's answers. I think that's a really, really good strategy. The best of all strategies outside. You guys said you guys did group study, but I have never done group study before, like to the extent that you guys have done, because I've always been a loner. So how did you guys like study in a group? I mean, like, I don't know how to study in a group. Could you shed some light in the process of group studying? Actually, we had also not done too much group study. I myself, I don't know about Dimasa, but I had not done too much of group study before as well. But we just thought, let's do this together because a sad sounded new and fun. I don't know. <laughs> we, we didn't know anything about the sad. Uh, let's do this together because uh, we needed someone to discuss our ideas with, right? So when I'm when I got questions wrong, where did I go to ask uh, if that's uh, correct or not? I mean, uh, where did I ask the reason behind me not knowing the answer to that particular question? Uh, I could go to the internet, but uh, the strangers took too much of time. But having a friend uh, doing the same question with me and we discussing it seemed to be a really cool idea, a really easy idea, right? It was too much efficient to not do it. So what we did was we created a Discord server and then we went there, we, uh, we would come and we would uh, start doing the English section, right? We'd mute each other's uh, audio and then we'd do the English section, we'd complete the English section, we'd come back, we would unmute ourselves, we would check our answers, and then he would check his answers, I would check my answers, and we would start discussing what went wrong in both of our answers, right? Uh, so in some questions, I did those questions right, but we must have did those questions wrong. And in some of them, when he did it wrong, I would do it them right. So I would know uh, what was the thought process behind me making that correct answer, or you know, what is the third process behind him making that correct answer where I got it wrong? And then we'd go through each of those questions. Firstly, with all of those which I had made it wrong. And then with all of those where Bimas had made it wrong. And then we'd discuss through that. We would understand it. We would say, oh, okay, this is where I made it wrong. And that was the end of the reading section. Uh, after a thoughtful discussion of around 15 to 20 minutes, 
Then we'd go to the writing section. We'd do the same thing. Right? So it was more like we were doing the sections as individual, as an individual. I would do the sections alone, but the discussions isn't happen together, right? Uh, I didn't think it really uh, it really is that difficult doing a group session if you do it this way, right? You're doing the sessions yourself. You're doing the sections yourself, right? You're doing the paragraphs yourself. You, you, you are alone for the complete 55 minutes or one hour, but you, you are together for like those 15 minutes, but both of you have come from the same experience of doing the same passes. And I think that's really helpful. There's nothing much to add, but the way we got started was that uh, we were working together in the same department in a voluntary organization. Uh, and we would meet frequently for meetings as well. So it uh, somehow felt like just an extension of that meeting, right? Because we were accustomed to that. And as I said, yeah. So uh, group study does not mean that we do everything together, right? So when we went through the Erika Mills' book, we went through the chapters, we went to the book uh, on our own, right? But then the 10 or 15 minutes of discussion that we had later, that was what helped us the most. So doing group study does not waste a lot of time. It does not waste any time at all. Because just, uh, you know, spending 20 to 30 more minutes can have uh, a very lasting effect on our scores and our understanding of the problems and our mistakes. So yeah, we recommend it. Uh, we recommend it uh, actually for all of those who ask us for any kind of advice. That's the first thing that I usually tell them. And that's not just because we are able to enhance our understanding, but that's also because we keep ourselves consistent. Because if I do not appear on Discord at that time, then Monoz is standing right there and it would be kind of a let down to him as well. So that helped us push each other because when I did it alone, uh, I could take a break anytime, any day. I could feel lazy or stuff like that. But then with a partner at the other end, that was not uh, an option for us. So that also helped us keep us keep ourselves consistent. Right, consistent and accountable. I would say accountable as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome, interesting. We'll be doing lots of group sessions in NYAD for sure. Uh, just a quick question. What does your day look like, like when you were doing the preparation for your SAT? Like how many hours a day did you guys practice and like that? We actually uh, didn't do too much of SAT. Like it might sound like we were doing too much of SAT. We did SAT practice for like three months and you, you might think that, oh my God, they're grinding through the SAT section, like SAT practice. Uh, but I, I don't think that was the case. We took it slow and steady, right? Uh, what we actually did every day, our uh, routine would look like, we'd get up in the morning, or we'd do whatever we had to do, or we'd get together at like 10 in the morning, and then what we would do is go through the reading section and writing section. We would do the reading section, or we'd discuss about the reading section, we'd do the writing section, and we'd discuss about the writing section, and we'd say, we'd call it a day. That's it. Sometimes, sometimes, we would do the reading section, we would do the discussion, and we would postpone the writing section for the evening. Right. So what happened in one day was either reading or was reading plus writing. And the next day we do the math section. So we completed one set in two days. And this was consistent over like almost three months. We do this uh, all the time because we didn't need to speed up. There was enough time for us. And I think it came to our advantage. If we had done each set every day, well, I don't think that it would have given us too much time to think about what we were doing speeding up never gives us like one advantage doing too many sets a day puts a lot of fatigue in your mind it doesn't help you uh, think clearly about the subject i would say that approaching sat with an easy mind with a slow but steady mind helps a lot you should start earlier that's why if you start like uh, before one month you'll, you'll have to speed up that's for sure but then i don't think that's a healthy practice i would say starting early and going slow and steady and you'll win the race. Remersa, was that the same for you too? Since we did everything together, yeah, that was the same for us, uh, for me as well. Uh, and towards the later stages of our practice, uh, like uh, one or two weeks before, uh, we also did full practice tests in one sitting. Like uh, we did the whole three hours test uh, without discussions in the between, in between. Uh, and then we, we would discuss right at the end. Yeah, the, and the math days were uh, pretty easy for us as well. They were not hectic because I would almost finish off those uh, well before time, well ahead of time. But Monos was kind of reluctant to do it early because he would like check over the questions again and again to ensure that he makes no mistake. Uh, and yeah, that's a real uh, issue as well because when you do so many questions, uh, there are chances that we'll make mistakes, uh, simple mistakes, not due to the lack of knowledge, but due to simply the fatigue in your mind. For example, if there was a, a triangle, right angle triangle with sides four and three, but four on the hypotenuse. I would, I once, you know, kind of, I put a five on the base 
and that's clearly not the case because if there's a three four five triangle five is the hypotenuse right so uh, those kind of minor mistakes kind of halted our score so we used to get like one or two mistakes on a map and uh, improving on that was one of the important things uh, in in getting a good score because uh, there's a kind of uh, an assumption that if you do not score well on the math then you cannot do well uh, in the sat for for at least asians like us yeah true 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 so uh, just a side question do you guys have like any books or resources for math section we didn't go through any resources for the math section but as far as i've heard college funders book is what most people go for that's what our other friends who are applying for sat went for but since we didn't go through any one of them uh, i can't uh, personally recommend anything i would recommend uh, the college funders math book because i have uh, an a short experience of teaching that book to one of uh, my friends so yeah it's a pretty good book because there are a lot of exercises and uh, there's there are a lot of different ways to tackle problems so i i i recommend that book yeah and also khan academy because there are sub topics so you can practice each of, each of the sub topics properly and then you're good to go i also went through that book like when i was preparing for the sat so yeah course find the book is great let's suppose like you have 6 months and you you don't know nothing about the sat what was your game plan uh look like in sort okay so if i had this scenario i think what i would do is i would start uh by looking up about the sat right so i would just get the basic uh, knowledge about it and i would go to khan academy no doubt about that because uh you can practice very well with that there are a lot of soft topics so i can just uh, uh, you know even if i do not uh, know about the topics i can just go through those questions uh, to kind of get used to the questions because that would help a lot uh, in the later stages of our practice as well so once i do that maybe i would pick up a, a book or a playlist or youtube playlist because some people might prefer books um, i prefer uh, watching videos over books in the initial phase of my preparation as well so i would again do that because it helped me a lot i could just you know the time where I, that i would spend uh, scrolling facebook i could just look into the playlist and it was not boring because if it was a single lecture of like 45 or 50 minutes it might have uh, it could have been boring but then it was like five or 10 minutes and we would we would be going over questions in that playlist uh, that i have mentioned we would be we would be uh, going over the questions and then i would do the questions before and before the tutor did those and uh, yeah i would uh, go through that phase and then later like three months later i think that's ideal because if you go too early then you will exhaust all the practice tests or you can keep gaps in between that works as well but then if you want to do it uh, every day something if you want to do something every day i think three months is ideal three months is ideal uh and then i would just uh go over one or two practice tests just to see where i stand at the moment and then i would uh, decide whether or not i need to study another book or another research right away so maybe i would pick up a book the black book is actually recommended by a lot we did not use that but then it's considered the bible of the set so i think i would go over that if i had the chance to and then i would again find a study partner uh, and then the same process we would do uh um, monos for you that's the same question but different timing like you have two months to prepare for the sat what would you do what is your game plan will look like oh that seems a little harder right uh <laughs> just two months uh if i have just two months uh i don't know anything about sat right i have no idea about sat whatsoever yeah okay so i would firstly understand what sat is what are the questions uh what are the question types what's the timing firstly i would go with that and then i would move straight to the khan academy i would do a lot of questions there because khan academy is gem for practicing sat questions you can't avoid it uh, be it 6 months or 2 months or 1 month uh, because once you start uh, practicing khan academy you become acquainted with the questions it really helps uh, when you're doing the actual uh, practice tests then what i would do is i would do one or two practice tests after i complete the khan academy section uh, to understand where i am where, where is my actual status and then i would go with a book try to understand for example elka melcher or black book for example or college banda and i would move back to the practice tests i would try to find a plateau somewhere where i would be consistently scoring the same marks because if the because if uh, the marks are sometimes high sometimes low that means that i have not reached a plateau i need more and more practice so i would need more, much more grinding if that's happening but if i'm getting a plateau i would think that i am in a safe space now like i know the max that i'm going to get uh, an average amount of uh, an approximate amount of marks that i'm going to get because uh, once you hit that plateau it's really it's consistent after i hit the plateau i would go with 
more books, more practice tests, if, if that's possible, if, if I have got enough time. But if I don't hit the plateau, uh, I know study really well. I think I'd, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I would have to practice more practice tests perhaps and try to find that plateau because finding that plateau is really important. Uh, I would search for a person who would, me, would be in the same state as I was, make plans with him, try to do the practice tests, find more and more uh, reviews about the questions that I was getting wrong, try to understand it more, put more efforts because the time is uh, really less. But, but two months is, I think, doable. It's not it's not something to worry about for those of you out there who just have two months before the SAT. It's really doable because if our exam had been in August, we'd really have just two months to practice. Uh, we had COVID and because of COVID, we had our exams postponed uh, like one month later, and that gave us three months of uh, study in total. But if we had given our exam in August, we were prepared for that as well. So two months is a really good time for you. Uh, it's like 60 days. Don't just think of it as two months. Think of it as 60 days, 60 long, long days. You can do a lot in that, a lot of improvement in that period of time. I think it's really doable. It's awesome to hear that it's doable from someone who has scored 1580. Another question, you have practiced a lot, you know, everything about these SAT questions, types, and you have like three days before your test. What do you do? Do you cram all night, uh, review all your grammar rules, mistakes, formulas, or do you just chill knowing that you have practiced enough and you can do best on your SAT? What do you do on those three days before your SAT? What we personally did uh, was we had enough time. That's why we, we had gone through everything. Uh, but then uh, on the last week, what we did was we printed out the SAT papers because we had, no, we had done everything online. That's why we didn't have an experience of doing it uh, in the original paper, in the, in the paper itself, in the offline version. That's why what we did was we tried doing the whole tests two days, until two days before the test, I guess. And I think that was just to make ourselves acquainted with how the exam atmosphere will be like, like the timing and uh, doing it in the paper, feel the, feeling the bubble sit there, right? uh, just to get acquainted with that kind of thing. But the last day was pure rest. We just rested. We didn't do anything because we wanted ourselves to be really efficient the next day. Uh, we wanted to have a good day race. Cramming is never the option if you know everything. Why would you cram yourself? But on the la last day, you could go through the notes that if, if you have made any notes. Uh, I personally had a, a Google Doc with uh, some things, with a few things that I needed to understand. I needed to remember before when giving this SAT. You could do a refreshment of that, but I would go... I'd be really against cramming everything on the last day again, because what is the use of those two months uh, if you're cramming on the last day as well? It's the same for me as well. The only thing that I did uh, on the last day was trying to find the right pencils for the test. Uh, so they had a specific specification. I did not find that nearby my house. So I went to places to insert of that pencil. And finally, luckily, I got hold of that pencil. So I bought many of those pencils. So that was probably the only thing that I did on the last day. As Manu said, on the last, on the uh, two or three days before that, we had just printed out some papers and we did on the bubble sheet. And the one thing that I realized was that filling up the bubble sheet also takes time. So it's very important that we do not do everything just in the PDF version. So it's important to get used to using the bubble sheet as well. Now you come to the test day, you have practiced a lot, but you're nervous on the test day. What do you do? Do you have like a mindset to keep you calm on the test day? Because, you know, no matter how much you practice, no matter how much you have scored on your practice test in your home, being nervous in the test day is like scoring way below your potential score. So what was your like mindset was like in the, on the test day? To keep you calm so when the time started and i started i got started with the reading section the first passage it completely stumped me i could not understand anything the questions weren't happening for me and then i got really nervous i got really worried and i was kind of hopeless but then i just went to the questions and did them and towards the end because i spent too much time on the first passage and i was nervous i did not have enough time to actually complete the reading section so i was in the last passage the science passage which was supposed to be the easy one for me because I come from a science background as well. So not being able to manage the time uh, for the first uh, few passages really harmed me because when I looked at the score report after the SAT results, I got to see that my uh, score on the science passes was pretty low. 
right? There are subsections. Uh, so if I look at that, uh, so I could have potentially increased uh, my score by a few points uh, if I had managed my time properly and if I had managed my anxiety and nervousness while looking at the first passes. And because I was uh, worried as I did not have enough time in the reading passes, that also transferred to the writing section. But then I tried to control myself and I tried to remind myself that writing was my strong suit. So I went to the questions and the questions uh, were, not, were not that hard as well. And for the math, so what happens is that when I practice math, I used to do them very quickly and I never double checked because I was not making those mistakes in the later stages. So Monos, on the other hand, you should check the questions multiple times to ensure that you do not make those mistakes. But I did not check that. And I thought uh, that since I have so much time remaining, I will just go to the sad day, sad test day, and I will give the math uh, section, and then I will review my answers. But even on that day, even with that much pressure upon me, I felt very lazy to check my answers again. It, it becomes very lazy. So if you do not have that habit, do not expect that you will do anything different on the sad day. And for me as well, things were not that different in my practice days and the test day because I had tabulated my scores, and my average was a 1560 in my practice test in the last five or 10 tests. And on the test, I got 1550. So that's not much of a difference, right? So do not expect to do anything you know, different on the test day. Just keep on uh, doing what you did on the practice day. Because even something as uh, important, as serious as reviewing my answers, taking my answers, I was pretty, you know, do that on the test day as well. So I recommend that you do, uh, you do not repeat what I did. Right? You need to practice like how you would do in the test day. Do not skip any part while practice. I really like what Bima said about uh, forming a habit. You can't do anything new uh, in the test day. It just becomes a subconscious to you just form a habit of doing the same thing that you did when practicing. Right? So everyone needs to take care of that as well. Regarding me, I was nervous as well. Yes, of course. <laughs> I, I think it's a, a universal thing about being nervous during exams. Like, And for exam is is important, is sad, I don't know, maybe. You become nervous at the start. But for me, I believe that nervousness played to my advantage. Uh, I really was happy that I was nervous because for me, timing was also a problem in reading section. We must would complete really early when we were practicing. But for me, sometimes I would not complete all the questions on time. And I was wondering what would happen in the exam. exam. Like if, if I can't complete it early, uh, I'm going to mess up my test. And uh, I had that kind of a thing in my mind. But then instead of going to the test, I really got nervous. I started thinking that maybe I'm not going to complete everything in time. That's why I started doing things early. Whenever I had a problem, question that was boggling my mind, what I would do in practice tests was I would start overthinking about them. I would start thinking, maybe this is the right answer. Then my mind would say, no, no, this is not the right answer. Maybe second one is the right answer. Now I would go for backward and forth, wasting a lot of my time. But on the test day, because I was nervous, I thought maybe I'm not going to complete everything. Maybe the time is not enough for me. And then what I did was I, 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 I made a very quick decision between choosing those two options. I just went with one, with one of them because I had this thing in my mind that I wouldn't be able to complete all the reading sections. Fortunately, that saved a lot of my time. I finished 15 minutes early, I guess, in the reading section. And that is really a blessing for me. So uh, sometimes not overthinking and deciding helps as well. So in the practice section, I was a really indecisive person, but the nervousness made me decisive. I mean, it forced me to be decisive and that really helped for me. That's why sometimes you can use nervousness to your advantage as well. You need not worry that I'm a nervous person. I, I really get scared during exams. Sometimes that can come to your advantage as well. I, I like to uh, request everyone to see everything in a positive light. That really helps sometimes. Even the greatest of greatest also face nervousness sometimes. It's a normal. It's great and refreshing to hear. Last question to each one of you guys, having talked about from preparation to the test day. After you finished your test, if the test did not go well, that's that score really impact your college application in like drastic way? I think this is a really complex question because sometimes it's college dependent as well. The college you're applying, there are some colleges which take a sad scores a really, I mean, they take sad scores really seriously, but then there are some colleges which do not take sad scores similarly. Uh, I mean, you can go and check the college data set of all the colleges. And there are some colleges which have uh, scores in the most important section. But there are some colleges that have sad scores or academics in 
consider section or not important section as well. So sometimes it's college dependent. But for a student like me, I come from a background where I uh, gave my examination from National Examination Board. I think SAT is was really important for me to show my academic regard because it is not an internationally recognized board, right? Uh, it's a board that's national board. Unlike Bimersus, who gave a level examination, which is an internationally recognized board. So for me personally, I had to give SAT just to, to represent my academic rigor. I think it was really important for me. Uh, and I think that getting a really high SAT score isn't a, a compulsion. Like, I would have been perfectly okay if I had 1500. For me, 1500 and 1580 doesn't make any difference. But having a SAT score that represents your abilities is a good thing because by the SAT score that you have just achieved, you show the college admission team that you're ready for college and you're academically rigorous and hardworking person. I think it just to show that part of your application. I completely agree with you. Having great score shows that you're very academically ready for the rigor of the college experience. For me, uh, once I got the score, it definitely helped me a lot. Obviously, why would it not? That was the whole point of getting a good score in the set. But then after we both got a very good score. Our friends were coming like, you should apply to this college, to this college, colleges that we were not even thinking about. So that also helped us. Uh, that also did not help us, in fact. So it helped us, you know, to sway our opinions. So we used to think about, should I apply to this college or that college, right? So the, uh, the list that we had on our minds, we had to change that while applying for colleges. So I don't think that uh, was a good thing for us. But eventually, eventually we both came to a conclusion that we should not go by that. So we should just see which colleges or universities that we would fit into. And we just apply to those colleges. And I think SAT had a great bearing on uh, on the results. We both applied uh, early decision. So we did not get a chance to know about what our other decision would have been because we had to withdraw according to the agreement. But yeah. Absolutely no regrets. Early decision, uh, eating to uh, Anwar Abu Dhabi. We're happy to be both there because we were there while we were practicing, while we were preparing, and uh, we are both there studying together, probably the same major as well, computer science. So that's a good thing for us. Sure, sure. So yeah, we'll come to the end of our conversation. Like any last tips, thoughts, suggestions, advice to our viewers from you guys before we but I wait. Yeah, I mean, for everyone out there who's preparing for SAT, and there are people who are retaking the SAT as well because the first attempt went wrong. I think SAT is important, but SAT is not everything as well. There are many colleges which believe that your extracurricular activities, your ACs, are more important than academic record. So you know, sometimes, whenever you mess up with the SAT, you don't need to worry too much about it as well. Uh, SAT is not everything. I have a lot of my friends who had really low SAT scores, so they went SAT optional because uh, they had messed up with the SAT somehow, but then got into really good colleges because of their extracurricular activities, because of their ACs and and other few uh, other other things, as well, other stops. And whenever you get a good SAT score, really SAT score, good SAT score, like 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 me and Bimers, which we are, we are considered really good SAT score. Sometimes we have that feeling that maybe I should apply to Harvard. Maybe I should apply to Princeton or a few colleges uh, that are in the top of the list because I've got really sad, good SAT score. But I've heard a lot of colleges rejecting even the 1600s. So what I want to tell from this is if you're in the the part where you're not scoring really good for SAT or you're in the part where you have scored really good for SAT, just go to the fit college, as Bimers said. Don't just like get your hopes really down or be more excited, overwhelmed by the score to just apply to the colleges that are really selective because at the end it's more about your character it's more about your whole application it's more about how you present yourself to the college then it is about a sad score sad score is just a framework for providing to the college to the application team that you're ready for college and now with college is going sad option means that you can show those things from rest part of your application as well if you have a really good ec that can that can also show the to the admissions team to the college that you're ready for college because a 19 or 20 year old doing really good ecs means that he is mature now to be in college. You don't need SAT score to do that now. That's why I think that SAT, while it is an important part of the application, it is not everything. And I, I think everyone needs to understand that. All the base visas to all the retakers and the first time takers. I have two things to say. The first thing is that I personally do not believe that SAT is any indication of how well you are academically, right? It's just an indication of how well you can do perform basic mathematics and English, right? So we study a lot of different other things in our high school curriculum, physics, chemistry, economics, business, a lot of other things. And so if you are capable of doing well in those, just having a bad score in the SAT does not define you at all. 
in my opinion. So I think I'm a bit hard on that as well because I've got a lot of my friends who were, you know, toppers of their colleges. They have got really great uh, scores in A-levels, but they did not do that well in the set. And I think doing well in the A-levels or any high school curriculum is way better than doing well on the set. The set is just there because it is there to, you know, standardize the thing because colleges have to compare students from different regions, from different curriculums. So that's the only purpose of set. And I also believe that uh, this is also realizing this because some colleges they have also declared that they will not be using uh, set as they used to do in the past. So I think do not get overexcited or you know disappoint, very disappointed uh, depending upon your set score. It's just one uh, component of application. And that's even you know many colleges are now set optional. So it's not that of an issue. I've got a lot of my friends who have got into great universities without even submitting the SAT score. So that's what I want to say. And the number two tip is that do not take people say very seriously on the issue of SAT because people will speak a variety of different things. Suppose we are uh, giving you some advice, some other people, okay, some uh, 1600 scorer, he might give you another advice. So do not take them very seriously. Just apply those and try if those are uh, suit, uh, suited to your to your skills and to your ability and just do what works best for you because people were like, you need to scheme to the passages and here I am making mistakes just because I missed one word of the passage. How can people, you know, make correct answers by just skipping through when I'm getting my answers wrong, skipping just one word or one sentence. So that didn't work for me, but that is widely suggested by even uh, those who have scored way higher than me. So the number two advice is, do not take advice very seriously. Just do what works for you best. If you guys have any questions or doubts, then feel free to comment down below. We'll make sure to answer them to the best of our knowledge. Let us know if you found this video to be helpful in any way by hitting the like button. It means a lot to me as this channel has recently hit the 100 subscribers milestone. You guys subscribing to my channel is what really drives me to make more videos like this. I'll be back soon with another video. Until then, peace out.